What's up guys? Welcome to another Juice Motor Parts tutorial. I have the pleasure again being with you guys and I want to talk about a really important tool that if you uh, if you plan on tuning your um, motorized bicycle engine, or, you know, let alone your two-stroke engine to begin with, this is a really important, fantastic tool to have in your arsenal. Um, this will give you, uh, it's a great diagnostic tool to figure out what's going on even if you don't plan on tuning and um, without further ado, it is this this guy right here, and oh well, it's inside the plastic bag, so I guess you can't really see much. But I'll remove it for you guys. And what we have here is what you call a compression tester. Now, a compression tester is, as I mentioned, a fantastic diagnostic tool um, when you're tuning your engine, uh, when you're trying to figure out if you have any leaks or things of that nature. So um, I'll give you a quick demonstration on how it works. Um, you know, for example, let's say if I wanted to install my new copper uh, juice motor parts, uh, copper head gasket, right? Uh, a thin, the thin version, which we offer at 0 0.016 inches, as opposed to your traditional 0 0.025. You should get a slight increase in compression there. Um, let's say if you wanted to install that, right? Uh, I have my here, my uh, model, model engine. <clears throat> you know, you would drop it down, push it in there, nice and snug. I don't have the bolts on this engine arm now, but you would, you know, tighten your M8 bolts, and um, you torque them down to uh, the specifications. For example, a, a typical M8 um, stud should be torqued down to something like 10 foot uh, foot pounds, or something like 175 inch pounds of torque using your torque wrench. If you can, if you don't have one, um, you should definitely pick up uh, a torque wrench, which I mentioned in one of my other videos. <clears throat> then um, you would remove your spark plug. So the, the cool thing about these uh, these compression testers, uh, which I forgot to mention, can be had for something around twenty, between twenty to forty bucks. You can probably get it off of Amazon or eBay. Um, you don't need to get the really fancy hundred dollar ones. Like you just want a kind of a ballpark range of how much psi you're running. Then um, one of the adapters of this hose correctly fits into the uh, the spark plug uh, the, the spark plug hole on the top of, of your cylinder. So you screw that in nice and tight. It has kind of a rubber washer there to ensure that you have um, a nice fit. Using the um, the NP valve that you you know you just torque it into place. And um, traditionally, when you would do a compression test, the motor would be already mounted on the bike. So what you would need to do is um, crank the engine like you're going to start it up. <clears throat> you know, uh, maybe run, probably uh, ride the bike, pop the clutch, and um, You'll as soon as the engine starts turning, you'll hear vroom, 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 you know, like the engine is trying to start. Um, but it's obviously not going to start because there's no spark plug. What you're going to see instead is this PSI gauge start to shoot up. And um, the way that you'd read this is, um, I mean, I'll definitely uh, do some research on the typical um, PSI of a two-stroke engine. But I'll include some information and probably have an article on um, up on the site about um, about compression uh, PSI. So uh, typically, um, your new engine, you'd probably get something like uh, maybe some, somewhere in between 100 and 110, roughly, with, with the new engine if you don't do any modifications like new head gaskets or base gaskets, um, which is fine. But if you want to be an enthusiast, um, if you want to get you know, thinner gaskets and things of that nature, uh, the, more you, uh, the, the more you reduce the, the amount of area uh, or, or the, yeah, the area or the the volume, sorry, the more you reduce the amount of volume inside this compression chamber, the higher the uh, the pressure goes. If you remember from basic chemistry, your you know laws, the smaller the volume, you know the the more the, the pressure increases. So uh, generally speaking, from what from what we've read and you know from our um, from our testing, you probably don't want to exceed you know 140 psi, because then again, um, you know these engines aren't really designed you know for high performance applications you know, of that nature, of course. Um, if you start getting into high compression ratios, like 170 and 190, um, what will happen is the, the engine uh, will be running at these, at these really high compression ratios. It will get hot faster. Um, since it's producing so much of this torque, granted you don't have dent dentination in the engines, um, bearings will be more likely to go, especially wrist pin bearings. We've had a few uh, wrist pin bearings that actually um, ended up breaking into pieces because of uh, running, these, uh, running high compression ratios with, with thinner gaskets and things of that nature. So you want to really monitor your um, your gasket, and especially when you start experimenting with this, you want to make sure your fuel to air ratios are up to speed. Um, you want to make sure you uh, 
I should probably include that, um, the correct stoichiometric ratios uh, in the description, but um, you can do a spark plug test for that to make sure that you know, you're, you're copacetic and you're not running too lean or too rich because when you start messing around with compression ratios, these things really begin to matter. Um, you definitely don't want to have a high compression ratio and you're running too lean. That is a recipe for disaster. Um, but uh, that's all I have to say about, this, um, about these compression testers. They're a great diagnostic tool. Even if you're not doing any kind of, uh, you know, uh, any kind of tuning, uh, what you can do with these compression uh, testers is check for leaks. So let's say if you don't want to have to disassemble your engine. Um, let's say if you, you, know, you run your engine through and you, you know, get a PSI rating of 110. And then all of a sudden you start seeing it dropping. Like you start seeing the needle kind of drop down. You know that there's a leak somewhere, so you may want to check your gaskets. Most importantly, um, if this is the case, I'll probably check, um, check your, uh, the four head bolts to make sure they're torqued down properly. To make sure um, that you, know, you don't have any leaks coming out of the side and uh, things of that nature. So it's important, um, you can run this every so often, maybe every you know, few miles to make sure your engine's up to, up to date. Or if you're an enthusiast um, or you know, a heavy modifier and you want some high performance gains, you can you know, check, and check the PSI rating, uh, the compression rating after every you know, modification that you do. Um, that involves you reducing the amount of um, volume inside your chamber, inside your combustion chamber. So I think that's all I have to say about the compression tester. It's a great tool. Uh, look out for an article. If you, um, if you want to understand more about these compression ratios and uh, compression testers and where to find them, we'll probably post an article up on the um, high performance tips sections, section of uh, juicemotorparts.com. And again, guys, thank you for your uh, time, and as always, get juiced.